Hello, this is Sabina at Cross Keys Crafts. The other day I happened to be in the Lavinia Stance shop. My German bestie was over for a holiday and we decided to go to Hlangochlen. There is a, an aqueduct nearby which is really nice. And yeah, I figured out Rithin, where the Lavinia Stance shop is, was on the way. So I thought I'd just pop in. I had two stencils and two mini stamps on my shopping list and I walked past the alcohol inks and I thought I never needed alcohol inks until I saw them so I bought some. So I just chose six colours. I didn't want uh, too many colours to play with but there was an offer on for these and so I bought the seaweed, the sunlit yellow, the ocean blue the Violet Splendor, the Magenta Bloom and the Forever White. And I want to give a shout out for the Lavinia Stamps customer service because this one here I was struggling to open because it had obviously leaked and the lid was stuck to the top. Uh, I managed to open it eventually and that was fine then. But with the Forever White, the original bottle, I could not open it. I could not squeeze anything out. I put a needle in, the needle got stuck and I didn't know what to do. I could take the inner cap off. Um, so it had nothing to do with this being uh, solid or anything. I just couldn't squeeze anything out. So I sent them an email and within 48 hours after purchasing these, they had sent me a replacement of both the green and the um, white. So when I finish with this white, I can also decant the other one there. So that was great. I'm really happy with that. So the other thing I bought to go with this is the UPO paper or the UPO card. I think you can use this on photo paper. I haven't tried that yet. Sorry about the glare there. Um, I just got 20 of the A5 sheets, they do A4 sheets, but I thought just to keep me going and yeah, I think it's worth investing in a good cardstock to get the, um, everything out of your alcohol inks. I have something else here on the side, quick explanation, I have got a few videos on my channel about craft room storage and I do believe in one in one out because I've got new supplies here. I need to find a space in the craft room. And in my one of my drawers, I've got all these drops that I don't really use. And I've got six bottles of these actually. So they will go out and make space for these. And I'm going to put them in the bin now. I don't think they're worth um, giving to anyone else. I think they're actually a bit solid. So there you go. That was the sound of them going in the bin. So I had a play the other day, actually, when my bestie was still here. We both had a play um, because this is really, really addictive. And I'll show you what I have created. I've also thrown a few bits in the bin. Reason being is I had a play with doodling on the cardstock. I didn't like it in the end. But this was one panel of, I had a second half, can't remember what I did with that. So that's actually a finished card. And I'm going to show you this basically basic technique, which I've used on all of these really, which is basically putting the ink down, going over it with a blending solution. So, and I try to figure out what to do with the panels afterwards. So that was one solution. My bestie, she made one where she just had circles and then we put a happy birthday die cut on top. That looked nice as well. I created this piece using all of the inks. I really, really like it, but I haven't got a clue what to do with it. I even thought about die cutting it, putting some resin on top and turning it into jewellery, but I don't know yet. I might just frame it as it is because I think it's really, really pretty. Then I tried just to work with just one colour and the blending solution. I think this is also nice and I think this one works for stamping over it and it's got some shiny texture it's got some rough texture I find this really interesting and I will definitely use this and then this one is one I made yesterday after I received the white this is the pink the violet and the white 
and um, when it was still sticky I applied some foil so we're going to do that today as well. So because I've only started a few days ago I'm not an expert I researched a little bit online but I think the nice thing about alcohol inks is you can just have a play and let it happen. So and that's what I want to do today. So I've already cut one of my five um, A5 panels into four pieces. They're just over two inches wide. And let me just check the height. That's just under six inches. So they'll be fine for smaller cards. So what I've done with all of my panels is I bend them a little bit so they are as flat as possible. Because when they come out of the um, packaging they are bent a little bit in the middle and unless you want to really let the ink flow you want this to be fairly flat and I've also covered my table here with a um, sort of leak proof paper it's basically a football poster from our pub I like to reuse those and I've also put on some gloves that is optional if you don't like um, if you do like mucky hands it doesn't matter but I wanted to protect my fingers today and ideally um, you would have a well ventilated room I'm keeping my window closed at the moment for um, because I'm filming but I will open it as soon as I take a break from this so I'll actually put these at the side. Oh, and uh, I'll make sure my door, door, door is closed so my cat can't come in because the cat should not really um, inhale the fumes. So I'm just zooming in just a little bit. The light's a bit dull today, so I'll put my lamps on. I'm hoping, I had found one video recently, my camera was struggling to focus, so I'm hoping this works okay. So. All I did when I started off is just putting ink down, just doing blobs. And I found it was best if I didn't use more than three colours. I found it got muddled if I used more. So I'm just going for the pink. I'm just dropping it down like this. And you can see the paper does it. Does it sometimes it's a rather round circle and sometimes it isn't, but it doesn't matter really. So I'm just putting one on the edge. I want to go edge to edge because I don't really want to cut these down anymore. But it will puddle a little bit in the corner, but that's okay. So and then I'm going in with a yellow. And you can either go in the empty space here. Basically just touching it. You can press it a little bit if you want a little bit more. Or you can go into these circles. And I find that rather mesmerising. Let me zoom in a little bit more. So I hope you can see what's happening. I find that really cool. I find it's a bit like meditation. So and then it's up to you whether you want to fill in these white areas. Um, I think I'll introduce another colour. I'm just thinking whether I want the purple. Or I could come in with a pink again because the pink there has turned orange now. I might do that. By deciding how much you put down, you can find the... It's the word I'm looking for, sorry. Um, shape. Sorry, just a brain fog. can decide the shape a little bit, but not much really. So you don't want the white there, so I'm just filling that in quickly. So, and either I could leave it like this, or I could go in with a blending solution, which then gives new shapes as well. So just a drop there. I think I'll leave it like this now. Again, I could go in with a darker colour again in the middle. Do I want that? I can give that a try. The problem is if the more colour you put on, the more puddles it creates on the outside of the circle. So I think I'll leave that for now. 
I can come in later with another one. So I'm leaving this here and I'm just creating a second one here. So same thing, just putting the ink down, some drops. This time I'm going for the green and the blue. My cat is scratching at the door actually, but I won't let him in. So I think this time I'm going in with the white. I find it quite fascinating what it does. It's really, it's really great. So and you can also see this one here now. It's lost a little bit of the definition. It's not round anymore, but as I said, we can do something with that. I think this one I'm going to leave. And with this one, I'm going to do the technique that I had planned for this one. So I've got some cling film here. I haven't done this before. I just saw this online. So I'm just going to put some texture on this. So I'm just dabbing on this because it's still wet, still damp. Crumpling up a little bit. The pink's disappeared a little bit, but that's okay. I can just add some more pink or some more blending solution maybe to get some lighter areas. And then go in again and take some of that ink off, especially around that middle bit. I think I'm quite happy with that. It's still blooming here, but I think that's really cool. That's really nice. I will show you those all without the glare uh, once I have dried. So I'm just popping this in the bin. So with this one, just checking if I'm happy with it. I'm leaving that to dry and I think I come in with it when it's dry. So I'm just popping this over a little bit here and see if I can do the third one. I've got some ink on my gloves now. Do the third one. For the third one, I think I just do more white areas, recreating a little bit what my mate did with um uh, so I'm just putting individual spots down, a bit like a rainbow. Just keeping my, using my clean finger, oh sorry, got a bit off camera. Keeping my clean finger down just to keep this flat. Let me zoom out a little bit, there we go. Bit of a stain there, no it's just a little bit. Um, so, so I'm just using the five colours here. I don't want to use the white really. So I'm leaving that to sit for a moment before I come in with the same colours, but probably in reverse order. Shoving that to the side a little bit. And then I want to do one more where I show you the foiling. I'm just thinking about which colours I want because I don't want to use the same colours again because I've got the other panel. So I think, mm, let me think. I'm using the um, violet and the blue. I think that would be nice because the violet is really nice for the contrast of the foil. There are probably other ways of applying this, but I think this is best. I'm just doing a few smaller ones now. This is really random and it's nice to have apply. And you don't use a lot either. Um, I've had quite a good play with these. And there's plenty left in the bottles. Okay, 
need some more of the violet. Quite like that, but it won't stay that way. You can see with the others, they have all changed as well. This one again has lost a bit of a definition. I think I will just dig out the um, um, cling film from the bin again and go in again. So I'm just unpacking that a little bit. And oops, might be too dry already. Definitely sticks. Oh, now I'm just stamping on it more or less. Oops, I didn't want that to happen. So, yeah, that didn't quite work. So you have to do it whilst it's still wet. But I've got an idea what else to do. Because I saw um, Tracy from Livinia Stamps use a technique. So I'll do that in a moment. So with this one, I think I come in with the blending solution again see if I can shift these areas about a little bit the darker ones see they open up again I think that's quite nice I think I also no I don't want any more green see what happens if I put some white on top They dissolve the ink underneath so that's quite nice actually so I try to keep this short with this one here I just want to go in with some more colors just to fill this in just a little bit I don't want um, really big areas so tiny bit of yellow there Really want the yellow to fill the whole area, but then uh, never mind. It's a bit out of control, but that's fine. What colour have I missing? Pink, yellow, or the purple? P purple there. Uh... So I think I'll leave that at that. So with this one, I need to be quick. Just get this one out of the way, and that one, and that one, and I've got some foil here. I think I will use the, oops, I've got some rose gold foil here from WOW. And it's a bit tricky, you have to find the moment when it's not too wet, but not dry either yet, because if it's too wet, it won't stick if it's too dry well if it yeah it will sort of move and if it's too dry the uh, foil won't adhere at all so almost past it show you in a moment what it looks like i quickly do this so i'm just like normal i'm just rubbing this over and see where it adheres oh so this happens if the ink is still too wet Pull the ink up and just come in again. Let's see if I can get a bit more to it here, especially where it has sort of puddled. That is usually the best place to adhere it. So I've got a bit of foil there, but again, it's nothing you can plan. It sort of happens. I quite like it though. Just wondering whether I show you the same technique on this one again because where you've got the thicker bits and the shiny bits that's where it would mostly adhere so i think for this one um i use the holographic silver oops don't do that oh silly me you just see that did it was it just off camera 
my foil just rolled into that panel there. Never mind. So. Yeah. That's better. So you've got a big area where it's stuck down, but also an area where it has taken some ink off. So I could just leave that to dry just a little bit more, try to come in with the foil again, or I just leave that as it is. Let's see if I can get a bit of foil down at the top here. Yeah, that's lovely. So, okie doke. So, I just pause my camera here now. I'm sorting myself out. I will have another go at this one here, but um, yeah, I'm just clearing up a little bit more before I continue. So I'm back with this panel. Um, what Tracy Dutton did in her video, she had an uh, like a dauber thing with a uh, felt pad. I know they sold them in the Ravinia shop, but I didn't want to buy them. So I've just got a folded up piece of kitchen towel and I'm just putting some blending solution on that. I know Tracy had a finer nib on hers. I wonder whether she had decanted hers. So I'm just trying to go over that and see if I can lift some of that ink off. I can. Just gives a little bit of texture. Almost like bubbles, I like that. Because some of these areas were really a bit too solid now. Can you see that now? So I hope it stays that way. Just using the leftover now. Obviously I've got quite a bit of ink on that kitchen towel now that I can take off. Going in a little bit at the top where I had stamped with the uh, cling film. So yeah, I really like that now. It's like little cells appearing now. So I hope that stays that way. Now I'm going to leave everything to dry going to ventilate my room, going to clear up. One thing I need to be mindful of, where this foil has stuck on the ink, some of the ink underneath I think isn't dry yet, so this might actually come off again. So I have to be mindful of that. I might have to use some cardstock and just take it off and make sure the ink underneath dries but that's fine because it's got a wild texture anyway so I don't mind it being all rough. I'm just popping in again I'm not happy with this panel I don't really like it so I thought I'll try and spray spirit alcohol on it and see what happens because I think that's what blending solution is anyway so but I thought it'll give it different texture if it's sprayed so trying to move it about without it moving too much and I don't know if the camera picks it up it's all speckled now um, it starts bleeding and blending I could even go in with a brush oh be mindful it's a spray so if you get too close, you will actually spray the colour off there. So I think i just leave it now, see if I like it. If not, it can go in the bin. So it's been about 20 minutes, not more, since I finished filming. And I just wanted to show you the panels. This one I think is really, really cool. It's got all these sort of little cells in there. And that's really great. This hasn't changed much at all. I try to make sure that the foil doesn't collect, didn't collect any um, damp ink underneath. I think it's fine. No, it's not. You can see it can still take it off there. So I'll have to be mindful of that. Maybe dab it off a little bit more. This one is great as it is. It doesn't have a lot of foil at the bottom, but I think I will disguise that when I create my card. And this one, I really really like now it's got a very matte finish to it not like these that stay shiny but this reminds me of German Easter eggs 
uh, we color our Easter eggs in Germany and this really reminds me of that and I really like this now. So I just want to show you or tell you, sorry, tell you the uh, ideas I have for these cards because I find every sort of panel sort of defines what you can and can't do with it. So my idea is just starting with the ones I have created beforehand. This one I would like to just die cut rather than having it as a full panel. I've already cut a little corner off to have a trial run with inks. I found the Versafine does not really work on it a little bit, but it smears. So I would like to try and stamp on this here with my stays on ink. Um, it might not work. I might have to dismiss it, but that's okay. So that's my idea for that. If it fits, I want to put the Lavinia Stamps Seahorse Sebastian on it. It might not fit perfectly, but we'll see. For this panel here, I will cut it down, but I really like the look of the gold and I don't want to lose too much of it. So I remembered that I've got this outline die. This is from Textures. This is the Magnolia outline die. And I thought if I cut this one, oh, sorry, there's the doorbell. I need to pause this. So I've almost forgotten now what I had told you. But yeah, this is the Magnolia outline die. And I thought that would be nice cut in uh, gold cardstock as well to fit on here. And I will obviously cut the size down a little bit. So with this one, I thought this would look nice sideways on a panel. And I'm just going to die cut a happy birthday, possibly from hologra holographic cardstock. And just place this on here, cut it down a little bit. But I think that would look lovely on there. With this one. I would like to do something with rose gold because I've got the rose gold foil and a bit similar to the card I've sh already shown you I'm going to die cut some flowers in cardstock I thought maybe one on the panel here again I might cut it down and maybe one coming off a little bit I thought that would look nice so with this one I've already forgotten what I want to do with this one. I know with this one, I thought it would be nice to do an eclipse card. But rather than doing a word, I thought because it's red, cutting a few little hearts and just pop them up would look nice. And this one, let me just have a think. Yeah, I've definitely got brain fog today. With this one, I've already got these ready here. I have got these... Uh, shell and seahorse dice and I thought they would look nice uh, possibly cut in silver although I'm a bit worried that it might not pop enough on the silver foil but it would be nice to basically disguise a little bit where the foil is coming off so again like this one going off the panel a little bit scatter them around once I've die cut them I'll have a play once I've done that so I will make all these this afternoon possibly and then I just show you the finished cards so it's the evening I have been working on the cards a little bit here and I do need to apologize I always say this I'm going to show you the finished cards and then I'll pop in with something Reason being is I found whilst I was fiddling with little bits, there are so many ticks, tips, sorry, tips and tricks I can show you. So I thought I stop what I'm doing and I show you what I'm doing here. First of all, before I forget that, this card that I wanted to stamp on with stays on, that was a huge fail. It did not stamp very well. Um but I will come back to this in a second part video because there are two techniques that I've seen on the Living Your Stamps page, so YouTube channel, and Joe Rice did something. So I will start to recreate this in a second part. So I'm just in the middle of finishing this card here. I cut this panel down a little bit this is a six by no it's not six by four it's four by five and three quarters because I cut it from an A4 card sheet and I cut this panel um, just the corners down and I think I cut a slither off the side that was a little bit wide 
but um, it's quite handy that I decided to die cut these um, shells here and I've got a starfish and another shell here as well because I found out as I suspected earlier that some of these areas where I've got the foil has not dried and because the foil doesn't let any air at it it's it won't dry it will never dry so it's quite handy that I decided to put these here at the bottom so I can just glue these over this these are stuck down um, right on the cardstock and these I will prop up a little bit with some foam pads but um, one thing I wanted to show you here I thought about I didn't want to introduce any more silver on this panel here just the holographic cardstock at the bottom so I thought I could just use some blue uh, mirror cardstock but when I placed this on here I thought no this is too much um, a little tip there by the way I was struggling to cut this out um, it's a cheap dye from Asia and it wouldn't cut properly so I went in with my scissors and a little tip is if you ever do that go in with an alcohol marker or pen and go around the edges and then you won't see where you have actually cut it because I messed it up a little bit in the corner there but I think I will cut this in white again to place here in the middle because then that will uh, match the side here and it will pop much more so that's one thing I wanted to show you and the other thing when I just thought no I'd stop what I'm doing I've shown this to you if you have been following me but I have got a stamp set here this is from a magazine and I thought this goes well with a the theme here and I've picked the Oceans of Happiness and Wishing You, obviously in the other order. But I thought it would be nice if I just cut these apart because I would like these to fit on the panel here. The Wishing You was really easy to cut apart and I don't have a problem with cutting stamps because these are cheap anyway. But with the Oceans of Happiness, this is really tight here between the two words. So I thought I'd just show you this. So what I do there is I bend it where I want to cut it so that, um, let me just zoom in a little bit and let me place some white cardstock underneath so you can see what I'm doing. So when you bend it, you basically cut it, um, parting the lettuce here and you expose the silicon at the bottom that you need to cut. And then this is really, really easy to cut without harming the letters. You can even use a smaller pair of scissors. And I've cut it in the wrong place. I wanted to have oceans off together and this together. Never mind. I just have to cut it again. Silly me. So it's a bit more difficult now to bend it because the word is so short. But I can just cut in between those letters without harming the actual letters so there we go so I thought I'd just show you this I will align these now on my block and then I will just stamp them with some Versamark sorry Versafine Claire probably in a blue I'll have a think about that for my eclipse card I have cut with this little hard die four hearts out of this panel i did by the way i did cut it down like i did with the others but i didn't really have to i could have left it at the length of the card but never mind and i've placed the hearts that i've taken out in the order that they need to go back into because the effect only works if they actually match i have now taken a piece of red um fun foam just normal kids fun foam and I have put some double-sided adhesive, this is just like a cheap roll that I buy in a local store, on both sides. Because that means I can stick the hearts down and also easily stick these on top afterwards. I just wanted to pop you in to show you this. And I will also, before I die cut these, I will cut this apart because ideally... You put foam only through the die cutting machine once. You don't want this to flatten it again. So I will 
cut these all individually and then I don't have any distortion with the shape of the foam. So I'm nearly done. I just want to show you the cards I've finished and then I'll show you what I want to do with this one here. I hope the video won't be too long. So I have die cut the seahorse um, three times from cardstock. Rather than uh, faffing around with little bits of foam pads, this is the really easy way to get dimension for die cuts. So I've got quite a bit of dimension there and I just cut it from white cardstock and I think this is really nice. With this one here, I have put the um, starfish and this shell on foam pads, but this one here, I only put foam pads on the left hand side and the other ones glued down flat and then the starfish sits on there. So I think that brings a little bit of interest. Then this one here, I kept a die cut just to show you. I told you what my original idea was, was just to add one more piece here. But I found it wasn't bending in the right direction, but it is an option if you fancy something like that. I decided to go for the single flower here and I've just stamped a sentiment from the same stamp set as this one here just for you. I just stamped that with purpling and I really like this one very simple I think but it works for quite a few occasions so just throwing a few ideas at you things you can do this one here I have just cut this as I said from holographic cardstock this is like a patterned holographic card and I also cut two strips for the top and the bottom of this panel and three stars with a little die cut to add to there. I think this is really nice now. Quite simple, works as a mail card as well, and it's good to have those in the stash. Just checking whether it was getting out of focus. So yeah, I'm really pleased with this one now. And this is the heart eclipse one. So the hearts get lost a little bit and you can only see from the side that they are there. I found after all that um, two of these hearts, the two bottom ones, got distorted a little bit in the die cutting machine. So they show a little bit of the white. If you wanted to, you wouldn't have to knee, um, use the foam. You could also do what I did here. Just die cut the heart a few more times and then just stack them up like that. And I found this little stamp, Sending Love, that's again from a magazine. But I think this is quite cute. And I really, really love the cells here that got were created with the um, kitchen towel and the blending solution. So, and before I stick this big one down, that's the one I created beforehand. And I used this Magnolia die cut, but that reminded me of a few things. This one here I stuck down with a spray adhesive because it's so delicate. I normally use my Zig glue pen but I wasn't quite sure how that would stick on the uh, UPL paper and the acrylic ink. Sorry, alcoholic ink. A little tip from me, never use any solvent based glues. I did that uh, last week when I had a play with these and I used my Colal glue. That will dissolve the alcoholic ink, so I advise you not to use that. Uh, with these all I used my magic glue, which is like a book blind binding glue, so that won't dissolve it. So, but before I stick this down, I thought I'd just show you this. I actually had, before I created this, I had to go with a few mixed colours. I dabbed them off with some kitchen towel. I didn't like the pattern or anything. But UPO paper can be used from both sides. So I just reused the back. As long as you don't mess it up underneath, that will be fine. And I've also seen that Tracy from Lavinia Stamps, she actually wiped the ink away. You can put some blending solution or some spirit alcohol on it, I think, and wipe it almost away. So that's useful to know. 
So for this one, I've just stuck this huge die on it. I had to cut it a little bit to make it a five by seven card. It's a huge die. And from the cutoffs, I cut a little strip and this is one of the Lavinia sentiment stickers and I thought it would be nice to just pop it somewhere here maybe even in the middle where this bit is and pop it up a little bit on a foam strip and then just put it plain down on the card I had thought to show you this as well to put a sentiment over the top here but again this gets lost, it's a bit too much, it's too busy. So a sentiment strip here, whether you, I use this one here, I could have chosen some plain card, maybe even the gold card stock, either would have been fine, but I quite actually like the fact that this gets lost a bit. Um, I might change my mind. And, oops, sorry about the noise there. That's the die. So just show you this in comparison I might even met this a little bit I could do that just to have it less busy but yeah you will might maybe see this in my thumbnail um yeah and I think that's all I need to mention now one more thing if you use cheap um stamps like these and you've never used them before stamp them off a little bit on some scrap paper because then they won't bleed or magazine stamps have got some residue on them from the production and they can really mess it all up if you don't clean these off first or stamp them off first yeah and i think that's it um i haven't got a clue how long this video is hopefully not too long but yeah that's me playing with alcohol inks and i thoroughly enjoy this i never entice you to buy anything but if you do fancy playing, maybe get yourself a few colours and play along.